But if you'll take to heart what the Bible says and know whatever God says about you, that's who you are. But we need to start speaking blessing so we can receive a blessing. We're called to make sure that people understand that God is alive. God chose his seed very carefully. He said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Isn't that something to be chosen of God? Yes, my name is Johnny Randall. I'd like to welcome everyone to Walk by Faith Ministry. This morning we're studying from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. The title of this message this morning is, The Promises of God are Yes and Amen in Christ Jesus. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory for the teaching of your word. Let the Holy Spirit guide us and teach us this morning, Father God, how to receive what you've already done for us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Okay? You see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Now, if you want to receive from God, you need to know the promises. See, in, in God's word, he has promises everything that you could ever want to need. It's in there, people. You don't need nothing outside of the word of God because he provided all of it for us in Christ. You see, salvation has been made available for us. Healing has been made available for us. The blessing of the Lord has been made available for us. The blessing of Abraham, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, joy, peace, happiness, people, everything you could ever want or need, God has placed it in his word. In his word, all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. You see, the first time God placed it in a man called Adam, Adam gave it all away, people. He gave this entire planet away, and he gave it to Satan. And that's why right now we got all these bad things happening in this world today, because Adam gave it to Satan. And Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You see, that's why bad things are happening in the world today, because like this right here. If you put the wrong people in office, then bad things are going to happen. That's, what, that's what's going on. It's like right now in our system we have today. If you vote for the wrong, wrong people and put them in office, president, governor, judges, whoever it is, then they're going to mess things up. You got to put the right people in office. And you know what God did? This time he put his own son in office this time. This time man can't blow it. He can't give it away. He can't mess it up. God put it in Christ. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all of the promises of God are yes and amen. Salvation, yes. It's available for you. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, yes, it's made available for you. Wisdom, yes. Prosperity, yes. Everything that God has made available for us, it's in his word. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. God placed it in Christ, people. Everything you could ever want to need, it's in Christ. And see, what God wants you to do is he wants you to learn how to access what he's done for us. You see, now we go to the Father in the name of Jesus and you find out what he said. What, what is it you need? You need healing. You need some prosperity. You need wisdom. Whatever it is, it's in the word of God. You see, in John chapter 14, verse 14, he said, ask me anything in my name and I will do it. So we ask the Father in the name of Jesus. Look at this right here. Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Jesus said again, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You see, here's the key to receiving. The key to receiving what God has given us is for you to believe that you have it before you see it. That's right. God wants you to take him at his word as you would a good friend. If you'll take God at his word, you'll act like you got it because God said it. But see, you got to remember, people, there's two kinds of faith in this world today that you may not know about. There's a head faith and there's a heart faith. You see, the head faith shows you what's going on in the world today. A head faith will tell you what the world says, what a doctor said, what people said. Why? Because that information comes from the world. But see, God has given us his faith. His faith only comes one way, and that's in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. You see, the Bible says, now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want the God kind of faith? You're going to have to hear what God said. If you want faith in what the world says, all you got to do is listen to what the world has to say. But guess what? The worldly faith plants fear in your life. That's right. If you spend time listening to all the stuff that's going on in the world today, all the tragedy, the lack, the poverty, the sickness, the murders, the killing, all that stuff is designed to plant fear in your life. OK, but see, if you spend time in God's word, it's designed to put faith in your life. And see, when you hear what God says, now you know that if you got find it in the word of God and you believe it and confess it, now you know it's yours. 
How do you access this? By believing that you have it before you see it, people. And see, you're going to have to have this hard kind of faith. Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus said, whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt where? In his heart. He didn't say your head. He said your heart. You see, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And that's in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. You see, what comes out of your heart should be coming from your spirit. And what comes from your spirit should be based on what God says. You see, that's how you confess you're healed when you feel sick. That's how you can confess that you're more than a conqueror when it doesn't look like that. You see, in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, this is Paul's, look what Paul says right here. He said, I am speaking the truth to you in Christ Jesus. I am not lying. People, how can you tell a lie when you say what God says? If God says you're healed, your body says you're sick, what do you say? If God says you can and people say you can't, what do you say? You see, you get to choose. And if you choose based on what it looks like, guess what? That's head faith that's going to tell you, oh, you can't do that. You don't have enough education. You don't have enough money. How can you ever do that? Well, see, you're going to have what you say because your faith is based on what your head tells you instead of what your heart tells you, people. You're going to have to learn to have this faith of God's word in your heart. Speaking God's word out of your heart will give you victory in this life because God has already given it to us. You say, well, Brother Randall, if God has given us all these things, why don't I see it? Well, see, you're going to have to see it without seeing it. Did you know you can see without seeing? That's why God has given us the imagination. That's why you can see things without seeing it. It's like right now. I tell you to close your eyes, and I want you to see your dog at home. Okay? You say, well, I don't have a dog. Well, look at that cat you have. You can close your eyes and see your little dog running around the house there, even though you're nowhere there. Well, guess what? When you get into the word of God, you need to see yourself based on what God says about you people. You see, if you've got the word of God, you're believing the word, you're confessing the word, but you're not seeing yourself based on what the word says. That's because that head faith is blocking what the word of God says. Head faith is always going to show you what, the, what it looks like here in this natural realm. Heart faith should show you what God said. You see, you can't see yourself sick and expect to get healed. You can't see yourself poor and never expect to get blessed. You got to see yourself based on what God's word says about you. You see, God told Joshua in uh, Joshua chapter one, verse eight. He said, do not let this book of the law depart out of your mouth but you are to meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. He said, then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. You see people, when you land in the bed at night, you need to be meditating that I am the righteousness of God. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am everything that God says I am and I choose to see myself the way God sees me. You need to see yourself healed, people. You need to see yourself living in a house. You need to see yourself doing whatever it is that you desire from God. And if you start seeing that, you'll start talking like that. And if you start talking it, now, people, it's just a matter of time before it manifests itself in, in your life. And see, people do this all the time. I talk to people all the time, man, praying for them. And all I got to do is just sit and listen to them. These are Christian believers. I mean, they love the Lord, but the only thing is they are taking in all of this worldly stuff. And when they talk, they're saying all the problems. Well, this is going on. Well, my uncle said this and my boyfriend said this. My husband said this. The world said this. I said, yeah, but what did God say? You know, you see, you can't feed on what the world is giving you and expect to produce what God said. You got to take God's word into your heart. You got to take God's word into your mouth and believe and confess it and then intentionally see what God said. See yourself more than a conqueror because that's what God said. Look, people, do you know that's how God sees you? God sees you the righteousness of himself in Christ. You say, well, how did God do this? I'm going to tell you what God did. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior your life, God sees me. God sees you in Christ. In Christ, God says, you are the righteousness of me. In Christ, you're a new creature in Christ. 
In Christ, you are more than a conqueror. You're the redeemed of the Lord. You're the seed of Abraham. This is how God sees you. And guess what? When you start seeing yourself the way God sees you, people, it'll change your life forever. Look at John chapter 14, verse 12. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Right there, people, brain go tilt. How can I ever do what Jesus did? You can't, but God can in you. You see, if you believe what God said, do what he says, then God will bring it to pass. See, God just wants you to take him at his word. And if you believe what God says and act on his word, God will bring it to pass. Jesus told us, it's the Father in me. He does the work. Jesus let you know, I didn't do this. It's God in me. He doing the work. God is the one that's doing it, people. But you know what Jesus had to do? He had to put God's word in his mouth. He had to do what the Holy Spirit told him to do. And you know what? When Jesus did that, the power of God was able to do everything you've seen Jesus do. But Jesus always gave God the credit, people. He gives God the credit. And what you need to do is you need to have enough confidence in God's word more than you do in the flesh. You see, the flesh is always going to tell you all about the aches and the pains, the lack, the poverty, everything the world is doing. The Holy Spirit that abides in your spirit is going to tell you what the word says. That's why it's so important for you to spend time meditating the word, believing the word, confessing the word. And if you confess that word long enough, people, I'm here to tell you that ship will start to turn around. You see, in your life, the tongue is a rudder like a rudder on a big ship. And if you keep confessing what God's word said, your life starts to turn in that direction. And pretty soon you're going in the path that God wants you to travel. But see, if you don't turn the rudder on that ship, I don't care if you're headed toward the rocks. I don't care if you're headed toward another ship. It's going to keep going the same way until you turn that rudder. And your tongue is the rudder, people, and you're going the direction and the way that you're talking. If you keep screaming, we're all going to die, you're going to die. You keep screaming that I'm a failure, I'm never going to make it, I'm never going to do this. Guess what? You are going to go that way. Because right there in Mark chapter 11 now, Verse 23, he said, whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith." That's the key to all of it, people. You're going to have what you say. Are you saying what the word of God says? Then the promises of God are yes to me. Or are you saying what the flesh tells you, what the world tells you? People, your worst enemy in this world is not the devil. It's your own flesh. That's right. It's your flesh. You see, in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it says, To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded means I am thinking in line with what the Word of God has to say. you got to change the way you think. And you can't do that without the Word of God, people. You see, in James chapter 1, verse 21, he says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to save your soul. In Romans chapter 12, he said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, in Psalm 23, in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, As a man thinketh, so is he. You see, people, if you don't change the way you think, you're sitting there running a movie that you don't even want to be a part of. Because if you're sitting there thinking about how tough it is, rough it is, I can't make it, there's no, I'm going to lose this, I'm going to lose my job, all the money, all this, right? If you sit and meditate that stuff, people, then it's going to come out of your mouth and it's going to come to pass. And that's what the enemy does, people. I mean, in this world, the enemy will sit and put stuff in your head and you don't know it's the enemy. He's showing you all the stuff that's going on in the world today. And if you sit and meditate all the problems, you know what that does? It plants fear in your life. You see, people, in the book of Job, a perfect example of this, okay? You see, Job was the, eastern, the, the richest man in the east, okay? And God had blessed him. Cattle, flocks, herds, man. He had a bunch of children. Everything's going great. But see, the only thing was, Job got to listening to the lies of the devil. That's right. Job would get up early in the morning. He was sacrificed to the Lord, but he wasn't sacrificing out of faith. He was sacrificing fear because Job said, maybe my children have cursed God in their heart. Maybe my children have sinned. 
So he would get up and offer these sacrifices to the Lord for an atonement for his children's sin. And probably the kids hadn't done none of this stuff. But Job was operating in fear. But because he operated in fear, he let it come out of his mouth. And then what came out of Job's mouth? The devil brought it to pass. If you know the story about Job, he lost it all, people. He lost his children. He lost the flocks, the herd. He lost everything, people. But if you look at Job chapter 3, verse 25, look what Job said. The things that I feared have come upon me. Fear opens the door for the devil. You see, people, you got to get the fear out. Because if fear is in your heart, it comes out your mouth, it'll produce whatever you're thinking in your life. You see, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. Well, if God didn't give it to you, who would it come from? Satan. You see, God can't do nothing for you apart from fear. Fear is a blessing blocker, okay? But God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. So when fear shows up, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to resist that fear in the name of Jesus. You see, you got to talk to fear. Fear, go get out in the authority of Jesus' name. Do you know that's why so many people right now are doing, not doing what God called them to do? Because they are afraid. Well, I could never go on TV. I could never preach that gospel. I could never witness to nobody. You know why? The fear has them paralyzed and stopping them from fulfilling what God wants them to do. But look what God gave you. He said, I gave you the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. That comes from God. Power, love, and a sound mind. You see, people, the power he's given us, that's the power of the Holy Spirit that comes to dwell inside of us that we can accomplish what God calls us to do. You know? Power and then love. The Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And a sound mind means we have the mind of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 tells us we have the mind of Christ. Well, if you got the power, you got the love, you got a sound mind, well, guess what? There's nothing that can stop you. The only thing that can stop you is you're listening to the lies of the devil who plants that fear in your life. Look at Isaiah chapter 41. Look at verse 13. You know, he says, I am the Lord, your God, that takes you by the right hand. And then he says, fear not. And I will help you. You see, if you don't get the fear out, God can't help you. Because as long as you got that fear in your life, you know what you're talking? Fear. In other words, you got confidence in what the devil's telling you. That's why you got to get that mess out of there. And apart from fear, God can't help you. You see, it's like in Mark chapter uh, 6, verses 5 and 6. Jesus went to his own hometown, and the Bible said there he could do no mighty works because of their what? Unbelief. You see, fear, doubt, unbelief is a blessing blocker. Matthew chapter 13, verse 58. The Bible said there he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief. Unbelief is nothing but listening to the lies of the devil, and that's what plant fear in your life. People just think, if you didn't have any fear in your life, do you know there'll be nothing you couldn't accomplish? There's nothing you can't do. And you need to start with the little things, people. That's why you don't go out and witness nobody. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever told anybody about Jesus? Have you told anybody how much God loves them? When was the last time you shared Jesus with anybody? And you know why you're not doing that? It's because of fear. Well, maybe they'll get mad. Maybe they'll get upset. Hey, you ain't got no problem telling them what the weatherman said. You ain't got no problem telling them what the world said. You ain't got no problem telling nobody nothing else that goes on in the world. Only when it comes to the things of God do you want to pick and choose. But see, people, we ought to be sharing this eternal life with everyone. You know, if they don't want to hear it, that's fine. But at least give them the opportunity. But see, the devil talks you out of, oh, they don't want to hear about that. They don't want to know about that. You might as well not share with them. That's not going to do no good. People, I'm here to tell you, not only did you decide for them, but you also decided that you're not going to do it. How do you know what somebody's going to say? You never know. But because you listened to the lies of the devil, you didn't even attempt to share the love of God with them. People, if you let people know one thing, God loves them. That is no lie, man. Anybody you meet on the street, I don't care if it's in a restaurant, bus stop, wherever it may be, all you got to let them know is one thing and you're not lying. You need to let that person know, guess what? I just want to let you know something. God loves you. And I'll guarantee you, people, you know how many people never heard that? That God loves them? 
you know? And if they say, well, I don't want to hear no more about that. Hey, that doesn't matter. God still loves you. I'm going to tell you how much he loves you. You can cuss him out. Use his name in vain. You can do whatever you want to do, but that does not change. God loves you. How can he love me? He doesn't know what I've done. Yes, he knows everything you've done, but he still loves you. You see, 2,000 years ago, God gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins when you was at your worst. When you was out there doing your worst, man, you know what I'm saying? God still gave his son Jesus for the sinner, man. You know? You see, that's why I'm here preaching the gospel today, man. It's because I tapped into the love of God. And I want to let you know, if God can love me, there's hope for the world, people. You see, I don't care what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done. I don't care. It doesn't matter, man. Let me tell you something. The love of God is greater than any man's sin. The love of God is greater than anything. There is nothing bigger than the love of God. Let me tell you something. If God would take his own son, Jesus, and send him to the cross and to pay the price for your sins and you don't accept that, you are a fool, man. The price has been paid in full. You can't pay the price. But if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to go to hell and you're going to spend eternity paying that price. But you don't have to. All you got to do is go to uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Look what it says here. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's the love of God, people. And all you got to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I don't quite understand all this, but I invite Jesus to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 13. It says, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, it don't get no easier than that. It doesn't get no easier. You see, God didn't make it hard. He made it simple. And all he wants you to do is accept that gift of eternal life. That's what I'm trying to tell you, people. All of the promises of God are yes and amen. Salvation, yes. Healing, yes. Blessing, yes. Everlasting life, yes. Look at this right here. In 3 John 2, okay? Look at what God's talking to you now. Your Bible might say he wished above all things, but see, God's not in the wishing business. He's in the praying business. So you need to get that little wish and put prayer right there. 3 John 2 said, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Now see, that's what the problem is. It's your soul. You see, your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotion. And because you can't see what God said, then you can't believe what he said. But he's telling you right here, if your soul is prosperous, now you can accept the healing and the blessing of the Lord. But you got to believe this. You got to confess this. You got to meditate on what God said. That's where he tells you, you have to renew your mind with the word of God. See, when you do that, now your thinking is in line with what God said. See, see, and if you can't do this, that's because you're still thinking like the world. And let me tell you what kind of thinking. That's what we call stinking thinking. And if you got that going on in your life, then you can't receive this. You know, there are Christians today, people, they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but they stop right there. That's where they stop that. Right there, they got salvation, and they stop right there. But guess what? Healing, prosperity, blessing, power, authority, grace, mercy, love. He has given it all to us. You see, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, he says, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. He says, whatsoever you... He, Look here, this is authority, y'all. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Bind that, bind that sickness and disease. Bind that lack and poverty. Bind that fear, doubt, and unbelief. You don't want it in your life. He tells you, speak to those things that you don't want in your life. What kind of mountains in your life today? You name the mountain and tell it to get out now in the name of Jesus and don't doubt in your heart. But see, when you do that, if you don't have a foundation of what you truly believe and confess, the enemy will come to your head and say, oh, you know that stuff doesn't work, man. You know them Christians, they're crazy. They're always blabbing it and grabbing it. They're always doing stuff like that. You know that stuff does work. You know what you're doing? You're listening to the lies of the devil. The devil is trying to prove to you that that Bible doesn't work. But see, it's too late for me. I already know the Bible works. 
You see, if the Bible didn't work, I'd still be in a place called TDC. That's Texas Department of Correction with a 25-year sentence. If the Bible didn't work, I'd probably be dead right now because it'd be 10 years in August that doctors say, Johnny Rundle, you got prostate cancer, you need chemo, you need radiation. Hey, guess what? Still here? I'm not in TDC and I ain't got no cancer, man. Why? Because the word of God works. You see, the foundation of your faith has to be what God said, not what the doctor said. What do you believe? Listen to what comes out of your mouth. You see, whatever comes out your mouth, that's what's in your heart. And what's in your heart either connects you to what the world says or it's going to connect you to what God says. You see, people in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, Jesus said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. You get to choose. You see, you can say I choose life, but you're still talking death. It doesn't work like that. You say I chose death, but I'm talking life. It doesn't work like that. You see, when you choose something, what comes out your mouth is the evidence of what you chose. You see, that's how that works. You see, we got a lot of Christians that I chose Jesus, but you still talk like the world. Well, guess what? You're going to meet your maker real quick because you can't talk death and have life. You can't talk life and have death. And that's why good things happen that's why bad things happen to good people. Well, I don't know why that happened to them. They was only 36 years old. Well, if you can go back and record everything that's been spoken in their life, then you'll find out what happened. You see, nobody knows what's going on in a person's heart and mind but God. But I'll tell you this right here. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. But if you want this life, you're going to have to speak life words. See? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And for the enemy to steal, to kill, and to destroy, you're going to have to talk that stuff. If you talk what the devil tells you, you are committing spiritual suicide. But if you talk the words of God, you're adding to your life more life. And that's the way it works, people, you know? Now back to looking here. Back to uh, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse 20. It says, all of the promises of God are yes and amen. Why? Because God wants you to have everything that's good. He wants you to have it. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 32. It says, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with Christ Jesus freely give us all things? I didn't say some things, I said all things. Right now, people, all things have been made available for you. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, I don't quite understand it all. But I'm going to take this man today as his word, and I'm going to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sin, and I dedicate my life to serve you. If you prayed that prayer, people, right now, you're in the kingdom of God. Read your Bible. Study your Bible. Write us. Call us. Contact us. We'll walk you through the scriptures and show you how to apply the word of God to your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Yes, I want to thank everyone today for joining us at Walk by Faith Ministry. We just know that you were blessed by because it's God's word. But if you like a copy of the message you've seen today, you can contact KFXB TV and you can get a copy of the message you've seen today. Thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again. Until then, God bless you so very much. In Jesus' name.